Hello everyone, Evan here, Tech Motorsports, and the E30 swap or the S65 swap has begun on the E30. So as you can see, the engine is uh, somewhat sitting in there. It's kind of hanging in there. Um, so I have started it and I've done some items to it and just trying to get myself in a position to where um, I kind of know in the direction that I need to go. There was a couple ideas, a couple, couple uh, methods that we could have taken uh, to get the motor secured into the engine bay. Um, so there was some other stuff that we were thinking that we didn't have to do. Um, so we would take it, all those things in, in consideration um, as we were going through and, and then I was trying to go uh, create the process of you know, what's going to be easiest um, so I don't have to back up and, and start again or redo something. Um, but unfortunately, I did get to that point. I did have to back up and that's why I'm here. So there was footage of other stuff that I um, technically recorded. But I'm pretty much going to delete that. Um, but uh, so, yeah, so let's get into um, into what I've done so far and uh, to get me to this point. And I and this is just going to be, uh, you know, ideas of what I want to do and ideas of how I'm going to go about it. But as anybody knows, when you go in, you find one little issue, which that issue is going to compromise and another not issue but an, another item to be installed so it's just it's just one of those things that that happened so let's get into uh into what i did originally and kind of where i'm at now okay so getting up to speed um the engine itself uh it had a dct transmission attached to it so um we had to get a clutch system which we've got and then we had a six-speed manual which all that has already been bolted on into the car which you already saw it in there um it's everything is kind of just uh secured tied um certain areas so that way i can get an idea of, of height length hood space which that's going to be an issue and oil pan and all that other stuff that pretty much is going to be an issue or it's just going to be something that has to be massaged um so uh so yeah so that's already been done the dct is sitting there and um that was one of the things that i ended up doing and um and yeah so let's took uh, let's take a look at the other stuff okay so one of the things that i ended up doing to keep my sanity down the road when the actual engine went in for the last time after everything's been done was i went ahead and removed the whole wiring harness and uh, to do that just in case i had to go into trimming or cutting or massaging none of the wiring harness was going to weigh the ecm is safe off to the side so what i end up doing just to make my job a little bit easier and the long run is i numbered every single one of the plugs um to uh so that way when i install it i know what what goes where um so there were i think it's two plugs maybe three that were completely open uh so i'll have to figure that part out uh which is uh that's better than having eight or nine figuring out okay it goes here but where um sometimes these plugs are identical and they can plug into almost anyone as long as the link is correct so um i just wanted to make sure that was not going to be an issue down the road so that's one thing that i ended up doing like i stated for my sanity later uh, later on so let's get down to the nitty-gritty and uh look at some of the patchwork that i end up starting and thinking that was going to be my first step. My first thing to do is get the patchwork done, get the rust out of the way and start with a nice clean slate. So let's take a look at that real quick. All right. So I'm sitting here on the driver's side. Uh, there was a rust spot uh, that was right through here. You could almost see that uh, that was been repaired. And there were uh, three small ones there, um, completely rusted areas uh, that was repaired, which is right here now. So my repair job just in the trash it goes technically um the reason why i had to cut that area out was for the headers so what i was stating earlier on when we were first looking at this and this is the first time we've ever done this and it's mainly more just kind of googling trying to get some information of uh, what's been done in the past so one of the things that um we were looking at was we were going to have to go into here and on the header side so we were well i was thinking i could still go ahead and patch these up and be okay but by the time we started getting the motor in and trying to get it to um, somewhat sit where it may be its resting home um started realizing okay i gotta cut more than we were, uh, initiated um and there are reasons why i'm only doing little stuff and i will get to that here in a minute 
but um, but yeah so I still have this whole rusted area I did leave that behind because that was gonna be cut out so I already knew that's coming out so I'm not gonna sit there and fix that um, if you can see I will go ahead and jump on the driver's side and show you the other part um, and that's where I stopped and had to rethink things and the procedure that I was gonna go about uh, on this install so let's look at the driver's side real quick Okay, since the engine is where it's at, I can't uh, um, film um, what I end up doing and how I got to this section here. But uh, here's a previous clip that I end up recording, and I'm going to try to squeeze this in uh, so you can get an idea of uh, what was going on. So uh, here's that clip. All right, so the cross member is out, of course, because I'm in the engine bay. Um, had to go ahead and remove everything that was right here, which was the brake lines, the fuel lines. And then the interim, since I was taking some of the lines off, I had to get to the hoses. So I went ahead and just dropped the fuel tank because it needs to come out regardless. So, um, so yeah, so um, I got the section out here uh, because as I was looking at uh, repairing it, I could see there was some, uh, some rust down in there. So definitely wanted to be able to take the piece out so I could treat the rust um, so that way it stops. And um, here is the section I was able to pull out. Uh, it was spot welded into place. Uh, so now I'm just going to clean this piece up and uh, pretty much create another one of these and uh, just slap it in there. But before, of course, I got to go ahead and uh, treat that rust. Um, I got a couple ideas on the how I'm going to mount the actual engine mounts which i'm going to do them here to the chassis and i'm thinking about extending it instead of just doing it plates here maybe extending it further into this rail a little bit to distribute the uh the weight of the engine but um yeah we'll we'll see once we get to that part so uh so yeah let me go ahead and uh, start uh building this new piece up and um in the interim i gotta go ahead and uh, pre rust. all right so uh here's the old piece and uh Here's the new piece. Uh, so, I, uh, as I was going through, getting some measurements and uh, just kind of going through everything, of course, I've had this already made. And then I started kind of like laying it in place, um, which this uh, section technically kind of binds into all of this. Um, so, as I kept going in, um, this is the section that uh, made me kind of. Uh, kind of stop think things through and I had to take uh, I had to stop what I was doing and go some uh, go a different route so what I ended up finding is by the time I started cleaning everything up and getting a good area to, to start welding and putting the uh, this section in place I uh, as I started cleaning all the metal and getting uh, all the rust off um, I kept finding uh, more holes and more holes and then as anything you know it looks like it's solid you know with a little surface rust but uh, once you start cleaning it up it there actually starts you know some penetration and you can see there's just a bunch of holes random all the way around so to sit there and cut piece by piece it was just too much so I decided to cut this whole section out and um, replace it um, as one whole big piece and uh, to go in there so here's the new piece that I got all cut and uh, fitted and going into place. And uh, the only thing I didn't do um, was the indention here. Um, and I was really back and forth contemplating doing it or not doing it. And I came up with a way to do it. Um, of course, I would cut it, uh, put the pieces and then cut the section out here and then weld it. But what I was coming to find out is if I ended up doing that, I'd have to get it like, this would have to be technically um, just it would have to be perfect. Uh, the contour of this, I wouldn't be able to bend it anymore to tack weld it, so I decided to leave it. And so it was just gonna be a nice clean slate and I would figure something else um, at that point in to make it more, to make it stronger. Um, Cause I know this this section, this cutout kind of gives you a little bit more of a, uh, of a solid so it doesn't kind of bounce and snap and uh, pop um, while you're driving, you know, with the movement of the vehicle. So, as I was sitting there and I had it laid in place, everything was pretty close on, on the gaps all the way around so I could start tack, tack welding it. And then I started looking at it and I'm kind of like, man, I'm going to have to cut into the firewall and how far am I going to have to cut in? So that's when I just stopped and I'm like, I need to get the engine in place, get it, get that sorted out and technically cut part of the firewall out 
so I can get the engine situated to where it's going to be mainly more its resting home and uh and that's where i'm at now so what i ended up doing is i did have to cut the firewall so i had to cut in here where the, where the exhaust goes on both sides um, so that way i can get the engine in nothing on the bottom has been cut yet um, and that's the only cutting that i have done on the firewall and uh let's take a look at the firewall and the back of the engine real quick all right, as you can see, um, the firewall is really close to the engine. Um, we got a couple little pipes here that are just have been removed. Uh, they will clear um, once I get everything uh, pretty much set. And uh, the main thing is the actual throttle body actu actuator uh, the, uh, for the right side bank. Uh, it's really close to the actual firewall itself. And, um, and if you could take a look, let me bring the camera down here. You can see that the headers, uh, they actually passed into the firewall, hence the reason why I had to cut the firewall out. Um, now, if you can see um, through here, I do have a line here. And uh, initially, this is where I was going to cut, and I was just going to get rid of this whole bulge and make it flat. Um, and then I started working my way all the way around to that side, so that way I could create one full uh, firewall and uh, kind of get it to go in there. Um, and as I started getting closer in the engine in, I, it looks like I will be able to get away with not having to do that. Now, I may still just do this section here to make it flat because we're not running a booster. Um, so that's gonna be eliminated. I'm gonna have to worry about that. Uh, we are running um, individual pedals. So the reservoirs for the pedals and the clutch will be will be right here, will be mounted here. So, um, so yeah, so I, I could go ahead and get rid of that to clean this area up to give you more room. And, um, and here is the main reasoning for all of this, which let's take a look at the front section real quick. Okay, so um, let's go over a few stuff and the reason why I have done what I've done and I am where I'm at. So there are some stuff that we have to keep or we wanna keep in the car, AC big thing we're going to keep the oem AC, ac that's the reason why i cannot go and completely cut into the firewall uh we would love to set the engine back uh far enough to give us a better weight distribution but that's not one of our uh key points that we want to end up doing so we're willing to you know risk and pull the engine forward just a tad bit um and we want to run ac and that was the one thing there's other items that we want to end up doing um, and so because the AC is the main thing, um, I have to kind of take that and, uh, put that on, the, on the, on the, um, priority list as I got to make sure that, uh, stays in place. And that's the reason why I'm not cutting into that much into the firewall to try to keep that tunnel pretty much intact. That way, um, this is, it's going to be uh, all the OEM parts that are in the interior will will bolt right on in um so if you create a new tunnel then you're going to have that that whole issue so that's one of the main things so we're keeping the ac system so i have to work all the way around that now the ac system itself here the uh ac compressor does not fit so i'm going to have to uh, make uh and cut into the uh into the uh, rail here up front and so that way i can go ahead and have enough room for the ac system to be installed um and and another thing that what, what i'm doing or what i was doing is I've already installed the radiator and the E90 electric fan, and it fits in here. I do have to trim the E90 radiator. Um, it is an aluminum one. Uh, there's a couple tabs that I'm gonna cut off uh, that's gonna sit in here, and there is a little bit of trimming that I will be doing to the actual, um, to the actual radiator um, support here itself. Not major, but it's enough to where um, it's, just small stuff and one of the bigger th or one of the things that i will be doing is going to be on the passenger side right here because of the way the the curvature of the radiator i have to go into into that section and it's going to drop far enough and onto the bottom to where if i need more room i could create a different bracket underneath but uh but she's going to fit in and i have a decent amount of room up front uh to run the whole entire system and that was one of the things it makes It'll make the rest of the install a little bit better because then I could end up using the E90 uh, radiator hoses. And uh, um, and yeah, so that's going to work and pan out. And um, with the radiator being in there, I'll have enough room for the um, 
the tranny and the power steering filled uh, coolers to go up front of the radiator. And, uh, and yeah, and hopefully, <laughs> hopefully uh, uh, that will all go um, smooth, but uh, we will soon sure, we will soon surely see if it's going to pan out that way. So now that I have this in place, um, it is not 100% set and where it's going to be at. The engine looks like a little low. Um, I may be able to go up with it a little bit, but um, of course, we're looking at the hood clearance. That's another big thing that we have to look at. And the uh, main uh, priority number two is we are not going to bulge the hood. It has to stay stock. So I am going to try to uh, get the engine as low as possible uh, to the to the ground. We will add a skid plate, um, but we are not going to uh, or to add. That's another priority was the hood clearance. We are willing to go ahead and trim this down. Uh, we'll figure out that part when we get to that section. Um, we do not, or GR does not want to cut into the oil pan, so we're not going to do that. And an oil sump is not um, not an option. It's just um, um, this project is not going to be cheap. Um, so we, you know, we're just going to go with keeping the OEM. Um, the OEM oil pump so working with that so um so yeah that's pretty much where I'm at now or where I've gotten and uh and yeah there's just going to be a little bit more cutting so right now um there was two methods to installing the engine and getting mounted in a chassis one was creating the mounts and adding it to the actual um to the rail uh the the actual rail itself chassis rail or um, using the uh, the actual cross member, um, modifying it to get it to work. And as of right now, um, I will have to modify the cross member um, because of the way the engine is setting. It's setting too far forward to clear the OEM cross member. So I will be cutting that in, cutting that up, and tubing most of that, and then adding the power steering uh, rack. And then hopefully that gives me enough room to clear the actual OEM oil pump, sorry, oil pan. And uh, what we're gonna have to end up doing is we're gonna be mounting the sway bar on the front side of the engine instead of um, on the back side. Uh, so that's one thing we'll have to end up doing on that. Uh, um, or if he feels bragging, we don't have to put one in there. I mean, he does wanna track it, but he says that's not gonna be, um, Every once in a while, it's not going to be a day, uh, constant track. It, it's going to be a weekend car, so that's the reason why it's going to have full interior. It's going to have AC, heat, all that stuff. So uh, yeah, there's a there's a lot of stuff going on with this thing. So uh, so yeah, so let's uh, let's keep moving on. Um, going to take a few minutes and figure out what's my next step, which I already know. It's pretty much trying to bolt up, uh, bolt up the uh, cross member. So uh, let's go. Let's get going with that. Okay guys, so I was gonna end up doing a cross member real quick and uh, attaching it to this, but what I'm gonna end up doing is I'm gonna cut it, uh, I'm gonna cut it now, um, kind of uh, just to get you, uh, uh, to get everybody to where I'm at. And um, I guess at this point, the real fun is gonna begin and which I'll start uh, part two of, of, of the build. So uh, at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, finish this one off. So my next step in uh, going into part two is cutting down the cross member and getting that to fit in. And uh, I already have the, uh, my tube here. So it's just a matter of getting that to work, getting the, the bins in it to get it to clear everything that I need to clear and uh, still give myself a little bit of room to where um, height wise. Uh, that's where another thing I have to end up doing, but you gotta end up creating one item to get to the next. So that's what I'm gonna end up doing. I'm gonna get the cross member going and see technically how low can the engine go. So uh, stay tuned for part two. Thanks for watching guys. Like always, like and subscribe. And if you have any questions, please put them in the comments and I will be happy to answer them. But again, like I stated, like and subscribe and uh, see you in part two.